plan a place and a time where you will read and think about the Bible each day this year. Put it on your calendar as an appointment with a person. And if anybody says, can we meet then? You say, I already have an appointment with a very important person. It is more important than anybody who asks for your time. President of the United States, Pastor John, mayor, wife, husband, daughter, son, God is more important. Write it into your calendar and keep it as a date you will not break. Carson, in his book, when he gives reasons for why people don't pray, the very first one he gives is, we don't plan. Much praying is not done because we do not plan to pray. We do not drift into spiritual life. We do not grow in prayer unless we plan to pray. That means self-consciously setting aside time. The biggest stumbling block to your not praying is that you don't plan. That's the biggest stumbling block. You hope it, as you go to bed, oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pray tomorrow. And if you don't plan when, you won't pray tomorrow. Satan will see to it. And he'll use the most wonderful things, like a telephone call from me. My father called me on New Year's. My father hasn't called me on New Year's for years and years. He doesn't usually take the initiative. I usually call my father. Well, he called. I was sound asleep. Daddy, why'd you call? But you know, I was up till 2 a.m. the night before. I didn't say that. But I was so thrilled. The point is, he, he made me weary and tired that day. He'd have any intention of doing that. It was the best thing he's done in years. Isn't this crazy? That it's good people who will wreck your rest and wreck your Bible time. They have no intention, and I don't know how Satan pulls that off or what it is, but it isn't just ugliness and horribleness in the world that pulls you out of your hour of prayer. It's good things, good, 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 good things. I, I wouldn't take back that phone call. And that's what I've seen in my life again and again and again. My prayer life gets wrecked with good things, not adultery, not dirty movies, not just good things. Take periodic retreats and saturate yourself with the Bible with overdoses until you feel like you are lifted into the presence of the Lord in a remarkable way and your prayers are uncluttered by worldly thinking. Wesley Duell, he wrote, I have at times read as many as 50 chapters from God's Word before I was completely alone with God on retreat. But on some of those occasions, I have received such unexpected guidance that my life has been greatly benefited. 50 chapters it took that man to get out of touch with flesh. Have you ever tried that? An overdose? for two or three hours, just read and read and read and read and read until God comes down and the world backs off and you have free access with him because the mind is uncluttered. Plan them, one a month or so maybe. Keep a journal and write out your thoughts as you meditate on scripture. Writing is a way of seeing. Writing is a way of seeing. I wrote a little poem, four lines. I know not how the light is shed, nor understand this lens. I only know that there are eyes in pencils and in pens. <laughs> there are. All I have to do is get you to try it, and you will believe. Write the text, verse or two. Ask the Lord to bring something to mind, and write what you think. And you will see so much more in that verse than you ever thought you could see. The main obstacle to seeing is haste. Haste and inattention. So one of the ways the lens works is just by slowing us down. Try a journal. You don't have to keep it every day. You don't have to use it all the time. Just try it sometimes and see what happens.